Today I'm gonna to talk about the single most underrated tool that you could ever give yourself as a graphic designer. Yes! Speaking from extensive personal experience, the single most transformative thing that you could ever give yourself is a mentor. I could probably end the video right there because that really is the best advice I could ever give you is go get yourself a mentor. But because I know you're gonna to wanna to know why, let's talk about why. Now I wanna be perfectly clear about something here. Not everybody that you work with will become a mentor. In fact, there's gonna be plenty of people that you might find along the way that have no interest whatsoever in your growth. They are really only in it for themselves. And so you have to go find somebody that's willing to put themselves out there for you. I guarantee you it will change the trajectory of how you do your work, making you better, faster, stronger. Because while you're sitting there on Instagram and Behance and designspiration.com and trying to say, hey, I'm learning how to be a good designer by looking at all these other people, well, you're doing it Wrong. No matter how much time you spend on Behance, no matter how much time you spend on YouTube, no matter how many design conferences you go to, if you don't have somebody in your life that's willing to be the proverbial creative director for your career, you're just not going to progress as quickly. This is Ira Glass, and Ira is the famed NPR radio host and producer who is most notably quoted for the conversation that he gave about the difference between our taste and our skill level. Nobody tells this to people who are beginners, all of us who do creative work. We get into it because we have good taste. But there is this gap. And for the first few years, you make this stuff and it's just not that good. It's trying to be good, it has potential, but it's just not. But your taste, the thing that got you into the game, that is killer. And your taste is why your work disappoints you. He goes on to say that many people never get past this phase in their work, that people know that their work isn't hitting the skill level that matches up to their expectations, and often those people end up quitting because what they don't realize is that this is all perfectly normal. Very few people start out as creative geniuses, and if you're not one of those people, well then you gotta put in the work. So you grind away, creating piece after piece, and you're improving, but you're still not quite progressing quite as quickly as if you just had somebody standing over your shoulder that could say, yeah, maybe try this. You must unlearn what you have learned. One of my first jobs while I was still in design school was I was working as an intern with one of my college professors. While I worked on the menial tasks so that he could do the bigger brain stuff, he would sometimes take some time to turn to me and tell me how I could take my work to the next level, usually regarding typography. And the benefit of that is that when I graduated, I was one of the few kids who actually got a job right out of school. And it was actually with a design agency and not one of these crappy jobs that designers have to take just to get something on their resume. And the reason that the creative director at that design agency hired me is because he said that my typographic work was better than anybody else that he had seen. I'm definitely not a design genius. I had to work just as hard as everybody else through the entire time while I was in school. My stuff was probably actually critiqued more harshly than a lot of people. But a three month internship with a seasoned professional gave me the leg up I needed to get that job right out of the gate. With that new job, I really struggled to keep up with some of the other guys in the room. I just was not far enough along in my skill level, but my boss was very patient with me and actually very good about telling me how to do things better. And it's fair to say I learned more in the first two months of that job than I did my entire time in school. Jump ahead several years later and I was working for a publishing company on a magazine called Chevy High Performance. Chevy High was slated for a redesign, but I wasn't allowed to do it all by myself. If you go back and look at car magazines from basically from the 80s, 90s, and even the early 2000s, not a whole lot changed there, but we had to make that change. I had to go with my editor, my editorial director, and the creative director and all sit in this private studio and hash this out. For 12 hours a day, for three straight days, we worked together to try and make this magazine the best thing we possibly could. And of course, my creative director could see that my skill level was decent, but it wasn't quite up to where he wanted it to be. Very compassionate, very understanding, and very good about showing me how to take my work to that next level. And because I was such an eagle learner, I got to sit down with him several times throughout the rest of my tenure there to really kind of hash out how to make the magazine the best I could possibly make it. He compared the look of Chevy Hyde during the time I was there with some of the other magazines that might have been in the same niche. You could tell that there was a big difference of what was going on. And the thing is, is that the work showed because when you would look at Chevy Hyde on the newsstand next to all the other contemporary magazines, it was obvious which one looked 
best. The other art directors on some of those other magazines didn't get the face time with the creative director like I got, and it was pretty obvious. But over time, I got to move into different magazines, and my creative director gave me the freedom to redesign those magazines without him standing over my shoulder doing it because he knows that he gave me the tools that I needed to do the job. And what was it that made me so special that I got the direct attention of the creative director? And I can't deny the fact that you like me. It's simple. I asked. I sat down with him and the editorial director and I just said, listen, I, I want to be part of this. And they let me. They could see that I was eager to learn from somebody who was smarter than me about this whole process. And all of that mentoring still informs the work that I do today. With all those tools and experience, I can actually look at my projects objectively with a more critical discerning eye and say it's good but it could be better. I can adequately critique my work and improve upon it without letting my ego or my lack of skill getting in the way. The problem is is that the work world has changed and a lot of people are just working for themselves. And when you work alone you don't have the opportunity to sit down with a creative director. People will make a design, they'll serve it up to their client or they'll put it up on their Instagram and then they'll just they'll just let it go and not really take it an objective critique about the work. And it's entirely possible that they don't do this because they've never been shown how. If I scroll through something like poster designs on Instagram, I can immediately tell right out of the gate who's been formally trained, who's at least had some work experience, and who 100% is self-taught. And it's not their fault. They just don't know what they don't know. Or maybe they do know what they don't know, but they don't know how to know better. You know? Which is why after how many different people have come to me many different times saying, Dave, do you do consultation? I'm finally taking the hint. As much as I enjoy sharing tips and techniques about how to do a certain thing in whatever different software, what's really going to be transformative with you is having somebody look at your work in a way that's going to take you to that next level. Now you and others can sit down with the creative director. Link in the bio. But if you happen to be one of those designers that prefers to be talked at rather than talked with, well, check out that video right there. And if you happen to like this video, make sure you go down, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, hit the bell because you never want to miss any of this goodness. I'm out. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya.